Spring, spring Fun! Fun! I hope you are well. We are in another week of lockdown, but we have some fun for you today, don't we, girls? Yes. yes. So if you are watching, on Friday night, the Olympics started, which was the opening ceremony. And during the opening ceremony, all the athletes come out and they hold the flags for their country. So I'm going to test Millie and I'm going to test Elliot to see how well they know their flags. So who wants to write with the elephant? Who wants to write with the crocodile? Crocodile. Crocodile. Elephant, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to hold up a flag and you're going to write down what country you think it is. So if you're at home, you can participate as well. Now, if anyone gets the right answer here, I'm going to do this sound. And if anyone gets the wrong answer, I'm going to do this sound. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. First flag is this one. Do you know the country that has this flag all right so you've got like six seconds to write it down three two one all right Elliot. how to spell it <laughs> what country do you have italy she has italy and oh, what no. country do you have madigan <laughs> <laughs> all right so really you gotta Flag of Italy. All right, here we go. Next flag. You ready for the next page, girls? Yep. All right, this one is super tricky. Super oh. hard. Wonder what country has this flag? <laughs> what country has this flag? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. The flag of where? All right, four, three, two, one. Millie, show us yours. Australia, I don't know how to spell it. Clearly, we have to do some more spelling for home learning. <laughs> Australia and Australia. Australia. So yes. everyone gets <laughs> no fighting. Good. All right, ready? Here's another flag. How are you going? I hope you got the second one right. Correct. All right, flag number three. You ready? Yes. Yep. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. What country? Has that for its flag? Oh, <laughs> Billy is ready. I got it. All right, ready? Movies. Reveal in three, two, one. Japan. 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 You, you did your title well. And they both got. Oh, okay. Correct. All right, ready? Here we go again. Yeah, good. You ready? Yeah. All right, the flag this time is. Da, da, oh, this is amazing. I don't know how to spell this thing. I don't know how you say it. Okay. Alright, three, two, one. Millie wrote Indigenous. I have wrote original. original. And they got. Alright, here we go again. We have three more flags. We're going to go super fast. Are you ready? Yes. Third last flag is. if these two girls don't get it right. Pressure's on. Mm. Pressure's on. No idea. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Germany. China. Germany. China. I think it's Elliot. Millie got. <laughs> and Elliot got. We have family in Germany, so they had to get that one correct. <laughs> All right. Second last flag coming right up is... Ooh. Lots of stars, lots of stripes. I wonder what country this is. Easy. I know all my flags. Ooh, she thinks it's easy. All right, ready? Go. America, USA. America, USA, and they both got... Last flag, are we ready? Yep. Yeah. Here we go. <gasps> I think I know this. Please get it right. Please get it right. Let's see. Do you want to have another look? All right, ready? In three, two, one, 
Go. France. France. India. And they both get. flag is Equatorial Guinea. Never Equatorial heard. Guinea. Had you heard of that country before? No. Well now you know what their flag looks like. Thanks girls. Good job. Bye. 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 Have fun with you guys. Have fun. Have fun. Bye. 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 They did pretty good. Have you ever heard of Equatorial Guinea before? Do you know that country actually is in Central Africa? And today I'm going to tell you a story about an Olympic athlete from Equatorial Guinea. Now in the year 2000, did you know that the Olympic Games were actually in Sydney, Australia? I was 12 at the time and it was so exciting. Now the athlete I want to talk to you about actually competed in those games. He was known as Eric the Eel. Can you guess what sport he participated in? Eric the Eel. If you guess swimming, you were right. So like I said, Eric the Eel is from Equatorial Guinea. And he actually got into the Olympics because of a wild card. Now, a year before the Olympics, he had never even left his country before. And he had a challenge. So he got the wild card entry, but his biggest challenge was he didn't even know how to swim. He had to teach himself how to swim because he was gonna compete in the Olympics for swimming. Now his country didn't have public pools. He did find a private pool that he was allowed to use three times a week between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m. That's only three hours a week. For someone who doesn't know how to swim and who is training for the Olympics, three hours a week is not much time at all. So he had to teach himself how to swim. He did it in the pool and sometimes he would train in the river or the beach and fishermen would actually teach him to how to swim. They would try to help him. The pool that he practiced in wasn't like the Olympic pool, the 50 meter pool. It was only a 30 meter pool. It had no lane ropes. It was a very small pool and he didn't even have a coach. When he finally arrived in Sydney and he saw the big Olympic pool that he was going to race in, that was the very first time that he'd ever seen a 50 meter pool. And during his training times in Sydney, when he'd be in the Olympic pool training, other swimmers and other coaches would look at him and they'd kind of look at the way he was swimming and they'd go, are you actually going in a swimming race? They were confused. But there was one man, the South African coach, and he saw him and he decided to help him. So he, he taught him how to move his arms and he taught him some different techniques that he could use. Now on the day of his heat race, he was competing against two other swimmers and they all stood on the diving blocks. But then, the two other swimmers, they dove in too early and they were disqualified because of a false start. Then Eric was left all on his own. He was the only one racing in his heat. Everyone was looking at him. He dove in and for the first 50 meters, he did okay. The second 50 meters, he really struggled. One of the commentators said, I, look at this guy, I don't think he's gonna make it. But he did. He completed his race in one minute and 53 seconds. And it was the slowest Olympic record ever. The record for the slowest time. But it was his personal best. And after the race, when he was asked about it, this is what he said. The first 50 meters were okay, but in the second 50 meters, I got a bit worried and thought I wasn't gonna make it. Then something happened. I think it was all the people getting behind me. I was really, really proud. It's still a great feeling for me. And I loved when everyone applauded me at the end. I felt like I'd won a medal or something. Now, Eric the Eel is the head coach of the Equatorial Guinea swimming squad. And because of him, the country actually has an Olympic sized pool, a 50 meter pool. You know, Eric's race reminds me of a Bible verse in the Bible. It's in Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Do you know, Eric had a lot of challenges set before him. 
but he looked at his race and he trained with perseverance and he was determined to do it. Even with all of those big challenges, like a really big one is not knowing how to swim. When you're gonna swim in the Olympics, that's a pretty big challenge. But he set his mind, he was going to do that race. And you know, each and every one of us have a race to comp complete. The way that we live our life is like a race. We fix our eyes on Jesus and we follow after him. We chase after him. Yes, sometimes challenges happen and we can get distracted and, and we can make mistakes or, or things happen to us. But when we fix our eyes on Jesus and the race that he has called us to live, he has called me to follow after him. He has called you to follow after him. He's also called me to do unique things for him. And he's called you to do unique things for him too. We can fix our eyes on Jesus. And just like Eric, he gave it everything he had. We can give everything we have into completing our race, chasing after Jesus and living the way that he lived. You know, if you're interested in the link below, I'll post a video where Eric the Eel himself talks about his Olympic race and the journey up to the race and and how he felt during that time. It's really interesting. But right now, I just want to pray for you because you know what? We are in lockdown and that is a challenge. And we are home learning and that is a challenge. But Jesus is still with us. And every day we have a race to run. We can fix our eyes on Jesus and we can follow after him because he is with us each and every day. So right now, before we go, I'm just going to pray. Dear Jesus, I just thank you that you are with us, that even though we are in lockdown and we're separated from our friends and our family and our teachers, we're not separate from you. And God, I just pray that you would just help us to live our life just like Eric did in his race, that we would be determined to follow after you, that no matter what the challenge, Jesus, that we would fix our eyes on you and we would finish our race, that we would live our life, run our race in such a way that people would look and that they would see the love of, of God. And I just thank you for each day's spring kid. I pray that you would keep them safe in this time. I've just blessed them in their home learning and I pray that they would have lots of fun as they do so. All right, day spring kids, I hope you're having a great week and I can't wait to see you again very soon. Bye.